Okay, today's the day. We finally finished an update that we've been working on since April of this year. There are so many things to show, so let's just get started. One thing I'm really excited about is the new ground detection in launch control. I set up a little scene here just to be able to play around a little bit. So let's drop in one of our trucks. Um, the first thing I just want to do is drop it into a own, its own collection. So let's call this one for RC truck. So with everything else selected, let's just scale up everything but the truck. So as you might already know, rigging this car with launch control is pretty straightforward. I already had set up a naming that's compatible with launch controls. All I need to do is just drop in the RC truck here and click rig vehicle. Right away, we have something that works. You can see the camber of the wheels doesn't really look so good on this model. So in this case, I will just jump in here to post mode and then adjust the camber slightly to make it straight at this rest pose. And then of course, just do a little wiggle to make sure that everything looks perfect. So the first thing we will do is set the ground as ground detection because you can see right now our car will just go right through all this stuff. All we need to do is just grab this entire mesh and drop that into our ground detection. But you will see how the car still doesn't go on top of the ramp. The reason for this is the car gets too far away from the driving path. But we can use a new feature inside launch control called snap driving path. And then just lift up the path a little bit. And now you can see how it snaps to the ground and our car just goes on top of all this stuff. So another cool thing we can just try out right away is just take our car back to the beginning and enable physics. And we will be able to see how there's a little bit of physics when the car is going up here on top and coming to a stop. So that we can of course adjust however we would like. We can use the post physics to just increase the pitch here in the end if we want some more extreme pitch. Let's double that. Nice. Um, and we can also, you can see here how the truck is being pushed down a lot uh, when driving uphill, which might be a little bit too much. We can adjust that by either in increasing the spring hardness, or we can also decrease the vehicle mass, and that should also take care of that. So let's try here on the playing back. Yeah, that looks like it's a little bit less. Awesome. Okay, so now I think we're ready to try to make a little bit more complicated animations with this to test out the ground detection. So after some fiddling, I've set this up, which is a little toy car going up a ramp. Everything is simulated with physics, jumps up here and goes down on the other side. And you can see how the ground detection all the time makes sure that the car would realistically or sort of realistically rotate the body. Going down the stairs works as well with a little bit of bounce, going through the physics and doing a jump here in the end. So one thing I'm using a lot here is something called auto level. So this basically makes sure that no one wheel would fly crazy uh, away into the air. So if I will turn this off, let me just turn this down and you can see how the car responds to that. That's because every time you change any value, the physics resets and it's ready to simulate again. And you can see here, how the back wheel kind of lives its own life and goes crazy into the air. This doesn't look super great. So because of that, we have the auto level feature, which you can just turn on and then you will have everything a little more leveled, a little more um, reasonable, I suppose. And that will give you something like this. One thing we could try specifically for this here, you can see how the wheels are sometimes clipping through a little bit. That's just because the ground detection isn't so accurate here. So I'm using a quite big mesh, which sort of averages and smooths out the ground detection. And sometimes for stuff like stairs, it will give you results that aren't as nice. So in this case, let's just up the resolution here that's inside manual gearbox, drop down to settings, and you will be able to increase the detection grid. Having it too high will give a sort of snappy motion and having it lower will give you smooth and nice motion, but it might also introduce some clipping. So let's try here again, going down the stairs. I think that is a better result. And doing the jump also looks nice still. So I think that's all perfect. When you are ready to export all this and render it, what you can do is bake your physics. So the way you do that is simply you click bake physics. 
that will go through and cache your simulation for you. That also means that no matter what you do, you will not be able to mess up this uh, simulation, which is great for rendering. So you know it's consistent. One note about this is that currently, sadly, Blender doesn't really bake all the attributes that the launch control needs and saves it into the blend file. If you reopen this blend file after saving it, you will get a message that the physics is invalid. You can see right now it says physics are baked. If you do change a value, it will instead tell you that the, the bake is outdated. So what we can do is increase this spring hardness and then just click recalculate and it will run through and calculate everything once again for you. And here you can see how that would look if the springs are a little bit harder. It will be less soft, more like snappy and bumpy and not look as nice. So one last new thing I just want to show you with this new physics. There is now a local ground section, which means that the car will just act better in most cases. This also means that now we can actually do loops with the car. So if I play back here, this is one of the presets inside the new version of launch control. The little truck goes around the loop and comes out on the other side. There's a little bit of a jump here. So a good way to debug these things is just open up the end panel and then hit detection grid. Here you should be able to see that we have some weird things going on here. That's probably because this grid has some few holes inside and sometimes that's just being picked up. So let's just drop in a big old nice plane and scale it up like so and include that in the ground detection. And there we go. Now we don't have that snapping anymore. You can also do this with the physics turned on. So right now we don't have any physics on. So if I enable the physics, you'll be able to see that when we're playing back, we have the good old physics in there. Should be able to see that when the car comes down, it does a little bit of a dip. And when it comes to the stop, it also reacts right there. So one thing that might be useful is to turn off gravity. By default, when you pick this preset, it's gonna turn off gravity. If you leave gravity on, let me just show you what happens. Uh, because it will give you some results that aren't really looking super great in some cases. You can see how the car just sort of flies off here in the end. It doesn't really make sense. It just becomes a big mess. When the gravity is on, the car will be allowed to fly off the path and go into space. When the gravity is turned off, the car will always stick very close to the path. So that means that you have more control over the car, but it will overall look less realistic. So if you want to do any sort of jumps off a ramp, then you should always have simulate gravity turned on. But if you want the car to not jump, but instead follow the path all the time, then just leave this turned off and you will be better off in that way. So one thing to keep in mind about the physics in launch control is that they are not developed by some engineers or some scientists. They're developed by artists. And because of that, they are probably not the most realistic they can be. So don't expect that you can punch in any value and get a fully realistic result. It is an artistic animation tool and not a simulator. Just take it with a grain of salt. Always make sure to dial in your settings, try some different things and see what works the best. Most of the time, this is where the presets will help you and give you a good result right away. I would suggest you stick to the presets and then open the customized settings and mess around with this a little bit more. So in Launch Control 1.5, we also have what we call multi-car workflow. So the idea with this is that you can animate as many cars as you want with Launch Control and then keeping all the cars in separate collections. So here, for instance, I have been animating this little razor going around the track and having all the cars sort of dynamically overtake each other, trying to push ahead in the race. And to make everything a little bit easier, we've made some handy tools that will just help you when you're editing all these cars at the same time. So first and foremost, the way that multi-car rigging works is that the cars have to be separated into different collections. So here I have a file prepared with this super nice model by Shimon. I will provide a link in the description. You can see I've also added this color to the collection up here, which just makes it easier to organize everything. So now we'll be rigging the red car here in the front. There we go. So we have our first car rigged. And that's pretty nice. So what happens if we want to go to another car? What we can do is we can click the little X and I'll just drop in another car here and click rig vehicle. Now we have two cars and you can see how the paths are color coded to make it easier for you to animate. You can go ahead and do this for all the cars if you want to. If we want to work, let's say on the red car, turn on the speedometer for that car. Even though we select in the viewport and click speedometer, it actually doesn't appear, but it appears in the green car. The reason for this is that up here in the vehicle collection, the green car or car four is active. 
But there's a little shortcut for just changing this. So whenever you click any of the cars in the viewport, either the driving path, the car, or the, the armature rig, you can click this little arrow button. And that will just update the vehicle collection to the current selected vehicle in the viewport. Either the driving path, any part of the mesh, or the armature. By default, it will show any collection that's available to be rigged or is already rigged. But you can click this funnel and then it will only show the already launch control rigged cars. They can make it very easy to locate your cars in case you have a lot of collections in your scene. The last feature I want to show you is the multi-edit feature. This allows you to edit multiple cars at once. For instance, if you want to turn on the speedometer, you can just turn it on multi-edit and then turn it on for all the cars at the same time. You can refresh the speed, you can enable the physics, and you can also do a lot of other things inside the manual gearbox. The same way, if you want to animate the speed of all of these at the same time, you can simply just select all the rigs, go into post mode and select all the wheels. And here you can also animate all this at the same time with all the cars at once. And you can see how all these cars are running around the track. They don't have any physics on them right now, but we can quickly turn that on and see how all this will look if they have physics on them. So this way you still have full control over every single car that you want to edit. And it just allows you to work much faster when you're working with multiple cars in Launch Control. So Launch Control 1.5 comes with a few different assets. One of these is Dave. He will be very happy to drive your cars for you. Basically, we made Dave because a car without a driver always looked kind of unrealistic. So instead of having to make your own character, you can just drop Dave in there and he will do a pretty good job right away. So now let's drop in our little Dave and uh, get started. I will just speed up the video here showing the process of how I set up Dave and post him for this car model, but this should all be pretty straightforward to do. It just takes a little bit of time. So that's perfect. Now we have a Dave inside our car and what I lastly just will do is take the entire Dave and put him underneath the body. So select the Dave rig, the whatever object is tagged as body and hit control P, object keep transform. And we are ready to rig the car. So as always, let's drop this into our vehicle collection and click rig vehicle. Car is accelerating and our little Dave is inside being a happy driver and it comes to a stop. If you want to, you could even go ahead and rig up the steering wheel that you can do inside manual gearbox settings, rig setup mode. And in here you will find that you have a bone here and you can attach Dave's hands to this if you want to and then they will follow this wheel. So the first thing I will do is just adjust this a little bit so it fits the model we have. So that would be something like this. It's great. Let's try to take our Dave hands and then and just change this constraint onto the car rig. Then steering wheel, deform, set inverse. Let's get the other hand here and do the same thing. Car rig, steering wheel, deform. So, and now we should be able to see that when we go out of rig setup mode, we jump into view and add extra animation controls. We can now turn the car and the hands are following the steering of the car. 